Hi, welcome back to my channel. Last week I was in Havasupa and it was so magical and unreal. I can't believe I finally got to see this place. If you haven't watched the episode yet, click the link above or here's a little recap. After camping four days, three nights in Havasu, we decided to stay in Arizona for a few more days to do some epic hikes. So keep watching for some unique fun things to do in Page, Arizona. First things first, once you arrive in Page, you should immediately sign up for the WAVE Daily Lottery Permit. It's the hardest permit to get and for the Daily Lottery, you can do it from your phone with your location turned on and only those within the geofence area in Northern Arizona or Southern Utah towns can enter the lottery. We picked up our WAVE permits, but since that's not until tomorrow, we went to Vermilion Cliffs to hike White Pocket, which you don't need a permit for. However, this is one of the hardest trails to drive to. Lots of cars get stuck uh -oh. here because you must have a four wheel drive. This is super important and please do not try to drive here without one. I didn't know how important the four wheel drive is, but once we were on the road and saw another car get stuck, I was so grateful my friends did their research beforehand and rented this Gladiator Jeep for the sole purpose of doing this trail. As you can see, White Pocket has insane geography and views. It's so unique, remote, and otherworldly, it felt like we were on Mars. If you're uncertain of how to drive here or inexperienced with off-roading, you can hire a guide instead. Getting a tow out there if your car gets stuck will cost at least $1,000, so don't risk it. There's so much to see here. There are pools of water, gorgeous windswept rocks that are so orange and red, and cauliflower-like white puffs of rocks, and moky marble rocks that are these black circular perfect rocks that are just created naturally, and petroglyphs from way back when. How cool is that? Please remember there are no bathrooms and there were some but very little shade in general, so plan your trip accordingly. We did think about camping here since you can camp here for free and lots of people do since sunrise, sunset and night photography here are insane. We stayed until sunset but left quickly after since we have to drive the roughly an hour back on the bumpy sandy road to get out of White Pocket and we didn't want to do it in the pitch black. Today is the big day. We are headed to the wave. Only 64 people can enter each day into the wave. 46 permits are granted three months in advance and 16 permits are granted one day in advance. That's what we got. The wave is also located in Coyote Buttes, so we're in the same park as White Pocket. But we begin the day at Wire Pass Trailhead instead. This is why it's considered a very difficult hike. We'll be hiking three miles on unmarked trails and relied on physical maps with photos that the permits office provided us and using the All Trails app as it was more accurate than Google Maps. So while we're doing this hike, I'll tell you how to get permits. You can do it all on your phone. Google White Pocket Permits and you'll get onto the recreation.gov website. I'll also link it below. It's very simple and there is a $3 fee per person to apply and all three of us submitted and paid for three people to increase our chances. We were so thrilled that one of us got the permits. 
So again, there is the geofence and you apply for the day after, so plan accordingly. And that's why we rushed to Page and did white pocket in between getting the permit and going to the wave. We also personally decided to go later in the day so we could get less shadows in our photos, but it also meant that it would be way hotter. They do recommend going early and doing it first thing in the day. We walked for what felt like forever after hiking every day nonstop for a whole week, but the second we saw the famous wave geology, we immediately knew we made it and it was so worth it. The wave looks like stripes, which are lithified Eolian laminae, which means rock layers made of windblown sand. Just look how insane this looks. The landscape is so unique and absolutely gorgeous. It's like a huge natural playground. And we hiked up to the arch and got to enjoy the views from the top as well. We highly recommend going up. It is a little bit scary in my opinion, but still worth it. And I'm so grateful I have the sun protection hoodie that also covers my ears and neck and kept me cool under the hot sun. I highly recommend it and we'll link it in the description below. On our way out, there was another car incident that happened and Prem helped to fix it. Lake Powell is an absolute gem. This is my second time at Lake Powell. The first time I posted a TikTok about it and it's still getting tons of views today. So this time around, instead of kayaking to Antelope Canyon, we rented jet skis so we could go further and check out more places like Navajo Canyon, Toilet Bowl, and Padre Bay. We rented two jet skis from Arizona Power Toys Powell for $420 and we made sure to record the jet ski for any damages beforehand so we wouldn't be charged. So make sure you do the same thing as well. And once we were ready, off we go. We headed to State Line Boat Ramp to unload the jet skis. But first we filled up on gas. Lake Powell is so huge and there's so much you can do here. I just love Lake Powell so much. It was phenomenal and it was my first time riding my own jet ski, so it was a lot of fun. There's not a lot of videos of us because we were whipping it in the water to get to one of the furthest points, Padre Bay, but we made a lot of pit stops to enjoy lunch, dip in the water, and just marvel at the scenery. So I'd recommend to you to flip our itinerary around and go to the furthest point first, then make your way back to the dock. So that would be going to Padre Bay and Toilet Bowl first, and then slowly making your way back to Navajo Canyon and Antelope Canyon, etc. We didn't do it this time since we were on jet skis and you can't throttle in the canyon, but check out this footage from kayaking last time. Isn't it so unbelievable? We spent the whole day out on the lake, and I think the next time, my third time going to Lake Powell, I would rent a whole boat. I'm manifesting it for myself for my next trip. So early next day, I actually flew out from Page to Phoenix and then back to New York City. But the flight from Page to Phoenix was one of the most scenic views ever. Contour Airlines flies twice a day, so make sure to get a window seat. I got to watch a sunset from the airport itself, and it's a small little plane, but very comfortable, and the scenes were insane. Keep watching to see.